This is not abnormal. For, for anybody, for anybody who who doesn't understand business or doesn't understand the music industry, you wrote a song that was going to go on a major blockbuster movie soundtrack. You co-wrote "Come with Me," correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is that is that the record yeah. that had um? Is that Nicole Scherzinger who was on that record? That we it had, was Led Zeppelin. Uh, it was Led okay. Zeppelin. Robert okay. did it. Cashmere. Hear my crime. Hear my cause. Yeah, Cashmere. That's when Puff remixed that song and was um, it was with the Godzilla. He was walking in New York. The buildings all okay. getting destroyed and all. It is. That. It is perfect. That song. It is perfectly normal for somebody who is going to to invest in you, invest in your future, to say, look. I'm about to, we, we, we haven't even started our business career yet. And I'm about to put you on not just any record, but it's going to be a single off of a major motion picture soundtrack to the movie Godzilla. It, it, it is not abnormal whatsoever, right. Mark, that Diddy at that time would require you sign a contract. That's fair ball. And I'm sure at that time, mm -hmm. everything was good between you guys, correct? Everything was just good. Even signing okay, at the beautiful. time, everything was fine. You know? You know? But if we all live up to our parts of it, you mean, like, I just didn't sign that deal to do this, that one song. I signed that deal to do an album and plenty of more songs. So after I wasn't getting that what I needed, like I wasn't getting the attention that I needed from the label, it was almost like I was uh, 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 on the shelf. You know, they, they was putting other artists and putting uh, money into other artists and more attention into other artists than they would do me. You know what I'm saying? So I was just like on the back shelf, just waiting on my time. Understood. You know, and that's one thing. You know, that's what I really didn't like. That's when I started okay. writing. So, so to my knowledge, and you, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I want to go over some of the records that you were on during that time. Uh, 1999 to the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. You were on um, the Forever, okay. the, the, the Puff Daddy um, Forever album, correct? Okay. You, right. you yeah, was correct. on Dangerous MCs. Um, from from notorious B.I.G.'s Born Again project, correct? Okay, you yeah, were on yeah, down yeah. the line, um, on and, and Muscle Game. If I got my facts right, on, on Black Rob's Life Story, his debut album, correct? Okay, did you do correct, any ghostwriting that we don't know about? Right. Yeah, I ghost wrote um on Puff verses on um like down the line. We say uh, at nightfall, um, that's when it all begins. Be prepared. We can't allow no loose ends. I wrote that. Um, um, let me see what else. Yeah, I wrote that song. Um, that's when I first started. Like, really, I didn't even know I was being the ghostwriter. I just knew I had hot songs. Every time I had a, something hot, Puff would be like, I, I need that. So he was like, Playboy, can you do this verse for me? And you and we get in, we did it down the line. So I didn't even know at the time I was ghostwriting. If you, I didn't even know, like, I wasn't really aware of ghostwriting. You know what I'm saying? I knew who Source Money was, but I didn't look at him as a ghostwriter. I looked at him like an artist that was signed to the rock. You know, because remember Source Money was over there with Jay-Z and them. So I didn't look at him as like somebody who just writes music and comes upon an artist session and helped him. So, yeah. I was, uh, when I had a hot song, every time I would have a hot song, as soon as I would play it for Puff, if it was hot, he'd be like, I want to buy it. And he'll buy it. It would have been my song, but then he'd turn it into his song. Some of them we never gotcha. heard of. Uh, just for the record, so much, yeah. every time you ghostwrite wrote, did you get a check? What, what did Definitely. those checks look like, if you don't mind me Definitely asking? got a check. I think, I, man, I think Puff would buy a song for me for like 25000 if he liked the song I would do, he would buy the song for it like that much. And um, for albums, I think maybe 2,500, you know, 2,500, 1,500, something sometimes like that. It just depends on if he buying the song or was I just being a part okay. of the song. 
You know so, what I'm saying? So, so yeah, he didn't buy. So all if he the, bought a complete song from you, that was twenty five thousand. If he, he just had you write a verse, it was twenty five hundred, fifteen hundred, somewhere in there. Yeah, so yeah, it was it well, yeah, yeah, it was like it wasn't um. It was much appreciated. Don't think it wasn't, but it wasn't as much as buying the song from me. You know what I'm saying? Like gangster shit. When I did gangster shit, I already had gangster shit before I went into the studio with them up there. So he bought those ver he bought that song for me at that time. Um, Bad Boy for Life, I had a verse. So when I did the verse for Bad Boy for Life, I didn't, I don't even think I got a check for doing that verse. It just ended up on I did a few songs on there. And I made a, I think I might've ended up doing like maybe four or five songs on it. The um, P Diddy and the Family album. I don't remember, I don't, I didn't think I got an advance. Okay, there were other songs. records that you were either uh, wrote for or you appeared on in the early 2000s. Um, you were on something like six tracks from the Saga Continues. That's Puff's follow-up album. Um, you yeah. know, you, yeah. you were also on the record blast off lonely i don't like that um and and obviously the one that the world knows you for is bad boy for life correct yeah yes sir that's 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 just the track record All right. sounds like me um, you, you know, know that's and these are just things that i'm rattling off um just from my notes but you know the the more i think about it what wasn't you on that training day soundtrack yeah, the Training Day soundtrack we did. This is not America with David Bowie. That was a big song. So every time Training Day is 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 aired, you know, we get a small little publishing check. You know, but and, and, it's and training. the G Dep, um, G Dep, with David you, let's get it remix. You was on that as well. To lace the track up with sixteen bars of crack, bring it back from the hood. Um, from the hood, we wherever we at, get the money. Ain't a nigga no one taking nothing from me. I'm hungry, no, I'm hungry for it. I'm chasing niggas across the board. And if they want war, we can war. That's the G Dep, the uh, Let's Get It remix. I did that one. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.